live with our regular Saturday webinar. Um, today is August 2nd, and the day is good. And yesterday we had a wonderful interview. What, was good, what is good about interviews? Um, well, we did a lot of connecting with people that we uh, didn't know that have a lot of influence. And their name was... Do you remember the names? Yeah, um, Jamie, Jay, and then me. Oh, no, I mean the Zenzucht. I mean, they picked a German word, Zenzucht, which is spelled, you can't really imagine. It has no Z's in it. Right, but it's <laughs> pronounced Zenzucht. And they're starting their publication next week. It'll be out, and it's national, and will be on the uh, cover of their first publication. Cover. Well, oh, on the first page. What I wanted to say is, you know, given interview is great because you start from the beginning. You say, oh, my name is Jim. And I started, it's like falling in love first time. You introduce yourself. Like okay. you, you told everything about yourself, the best about yourself, right? Yes. So um, you all know, you know who we are, but, you know, they... They, did it. they didn't know much, so we say, you know, there is a colony, and explain what the colony is. And I say that, you know, we are here only the ground team supporting and applying to go there, right? Right. And then, you know, they are not exactly, we are not colonizing the, the space yet. It's not like Europeans colonizing the whole globe, right? It's not British right. colony. You don't have army there, we are guests there, it's not like a call, it's more like a playground, we are children and they are hosting a playground for children, that sort of thing. So it's, it's pro the proper name would be a human playground in space, right? <laughs> yes, that would be appropriate. There, uh, the call, so we had a really long conversation, I think it lasted about two and a half hours with this interview and there was uh, Misty, uh, Jen, and right here with us was uh, Jamie, and it was really fun. And actually, one person from the human colony showed up, Brian, and he was it was very he was very helpful. So yeah. showed up toward the end. Yes, yeah, Slava, if you have a chance, cut only the Brian speech about vulnerability from the beginning of that speech. No, no intros, no ends, and to the end. I think it's worth posting by itself. It was. A wonderful three minutes um, mm -hmm. explanation on how to connect, to uh, how to heal this connection. It is great. Uh, but they had a wonderful time. We had a wonderful time, and we will get together again. And we got 26 messages in chat. People are talking while we are talking. They are talking. Yes. Nice. So. Uh, uh, we, we already said hi offline, now we are on air, so I would say hi again, and we get 777 John yes. from China, Gabriel, from the boat, uh, sailing ship, Yes. Jaguar. Jaguar, hey Jaguar, hey Kim, thank you for your support, hey Major, hey oh, Mary, you look nice Mary now. Hello. And um, hey, Pegasus. Hey, Sabrina. Hello. Hello, everybody again. Hello. Wow. Oh, but wait a second. Are you holding something? Let me see what you're holding. Something magic. It's Brazilian magic. rock stone. You know, yesterday on our interview webinar, that was exactly the same stone. Exactly. It looked like. That's, yeah, similar. I saw that. I saw. Hers is bigger. Ah, so it's yes. not a coincidence. It is no. a symbol. What does it symbolize? I don't know. I went to the store. I saw it. I, I catch my eyes. Uh -huh. yes, and when I hold it, it, it feels good. Oh, wonderful. It looks beautiful. Yes, thank I you. Think Jen had a stone like that. Yes. So what are the topics today? Um, yesterday we started mentioning God again, and I was thinking about God again. I mean, it's a an eternal topic. It can speak about that every second, every minute. But uh, I guess the question of today, high intelligence, you know, well, that's what interests me. High intelligence, how is it all designed? 
is the other events in our life controlled by some sort of high intelligence and what relation this high intelligence has to do with all that is God? Is it God or is it kind of a representative of God, one of the beings, a creator, how are they all related? But basically what is, again, what is just one layer above us or a few layers, what is most influential on on events here, is there somebody, some consciousness which controls in some way or plays with us? Who is playing on the other side? Who is doing, uh, is responsible for synchronicities, luck, mischief, and just guidance, basically? God's providence, who is responsible for God's providence? That would be an interesting question to ask. They people in higher dimension, they might know more, or angels might know more. So the candidates which we know is oh, the God, the Creator. The human collective apparently plays a huge role in what's happening here. So human collective is a suspect. Angels, certainly they are allowed to intervene. They kind of work in bees outside of dimensions who intervene. And spirit guides, they also somehow have a lot, of, a lot to say in what is happening to us every day. Higher self, is higher self doing anything? Is and you know the new age paradigm is that I that am doing everything. Like if it is all my dream, maybe it's me doing it all of that. So so what is the relationship between all of those between all of those? And you know Russians love you know to blame everything on demons. So demons are they demons and um, sat Satan are they also involved? So that's one of the questions. Another question I had was. Is there a DNA code outside of our dimension which is part of us? Is there like non-physical DNA in our ethereal, ethereal body? And is memory stored here in physical or in ethereal body? And if it's stored in the ethereal body, are there like chromosomes there, ethereal chromosome, ethereal cells, and ethereal enzymes? It's kind of, now it's obvious when you pronounce it, but for me it's kind of, something new which I didn't think about that before much. And I invite your kind of introductions to the topics. If you have any general topics, obviously you have personal questions, but what general questions you have so, you know, people on the other side would be prepared, prepared for those. I invite you to pronounce those. Very good. Talk slower. Oh, <laughs> did you hear me? If you have um, highly, highly evolved uh, spiritual beings called Ascended Masters. Yes. Yes. You could call on maybe one of the... I'm not sure. Has anybody ever channeled an Ascended Master? I have not um, channeled him, uh, but I have felt his presence. So, Ascended Master... So, the definition of Ascended Master is something, somebody who has been on Earth as a human, and then uh, evolved so much that to so they were are ready to move to the next dimension and leave this uh, cycle of third, fourth, seventh dimension. So we're going in this cycle, third, seventh, third, seventh. They're ready to leave and move on into next existence, but they chose to stay with us to give us guidance. So these are most advanced human souls which. Uh, already completed the cycles, but stay here to serve. That's yes, they have the completed the physical cycle. Mm -hmm. Any more topics to bring, like general topics to bring to discussion with um, channeled beings? Other than yeah, person, person? Yes, to allow them to express their own preferences and topics and their own ideas. So, therefore, be space for them, not just answering our questions, but even addressing their questions to us, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Wonderful, yes. So, or, or, or allow them to choose a topic. Or... Mm -hmm. or... Wonderful. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I'm going to, if nobody has any more questions, needs more questions. I'll wait till uh, 
Max adjusts everything here. And um, I will uh, see who comes along. Hello. Sounds like Lakesh. No. Oh, hello. I am Buddha. Welcome, Buddha. Nice to have you again. Thank you. I left off with the solar plexus chakras. And today I want to speak about the heart, which is the most powerful and important of the chakras in third dimension. you realize that many things come from the heart. Telepathy starts at the heart. When I was just a child and learning about the chakras, when we got to the heart, I had not a problem with the heart because I was born of the heart. I was, and that is how I was chosen to become who I was. That was my destiny of the heart. And behind every chakra, is the answers to all your questions because you bring your lives with you behind each of your chakras and the heart is a recorder of all of them. Not every chakra contains information about every life but the heart does. The heart does. It has a representation in every life and comes with you in every life. And so there, that is why you are able to come back with love. Even as an amoeba started many millions and millions, even billions of years ago, there was a central location in it, and that was the heart. And the memory of that amoeba comes with you a billion years, and it changes you. Every life gives you a slight change, but it's still the original life. Do you understand this? Yes, thank you, yes. All right. Also, the heart pulls all the chakras together. It is like the magnet that pulls down from the sky and up from the earth. It is what is... I, f I just do not know the word. It is so strong, it pulls, it is the magnet, I guess, that pulls things down and pulls things up to it to keep you s so balanced that you can move forward. Without that balance of the heart in the center, there would be no balance within the, the chakras at all, and you would be gone from one thought to another thought without it connecting as a whole thought because if you realize that every thought is connected to the heart in the sense that it comes from 
a central location in your being, not the mind as much as the heart. The mind is there to intellectualize, yes, but the heart is there to bring it all together in an emotional pattern that equalizes through the body and mind. Is this a w making you aware of something? Yes, yes, thank you, yes. Yes, so the heart connected centrally to the body in its energy patterns is actually the control area for the body, even for the mind, because without the heart then we have just the darkness. Do you understand this? Because the other, the spirit, the third eye, the communication, the solar plexus, the sacral, the root, are all connected so that they can be energized by the heart, or else they take a dark turn. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And you do not want a dark turn. It is not that you would not be alive without the energy of the heart or the chakras. There would be some soul, but they are there put there for reasons. For reasons of balance, for reasons of understanding, for reasons of connection within the community of the universe and the world you live in. Does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions before I go on? I sense that there is a little confusion out there. I have questions, but I invite audience to speak first, if you like. Anybody? Yeah, hello, Buddha. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is Kirby. I want to ask you a question. Uh, yes. When, when I meditate, I, I, I feel warm and, and hot in my heart. I, I, I don't know why I have this feeling. Can you tell me why? Yes. The Thank heat. You. There's warmth and heat in the truth in the, the center of the heart, when you're feeling this during a meditation, it is mm -hmm. much about healing yourself, healing your emotions, healing that those things within you that need balance or understanding. And so when you do a meditation and you feel heat in your heart, let it burn out those things that are not supposed to be there. Do you understand this? There as human beings we have many emotions and subconsciously we have many emotions as well and if we let the heat of a spirit of the meditation the intention burn out those things that are not supposed to be there it purifies all the processes of connection within the chakras and without within the mind, the soul, the spirit, the body. And that is why the heart is central. It is the love station. It is the center of those things that are spirit. This is how you were born. Spirit within flesh. And the heart is the secret to reaching to that spirit. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Got it. I wanted to ask about the blockage of the heart chakra. It looks like our Western education intentionally blocks the heart chakra towards this balanced head over heart. So how about the bal restoring the balance of head and heart and syn synchrony and communication between them? Yes. When you intend your meditation, what happens? Does it go to your head? No. It expands out from the heart. When you meditate, it may not feel that way, but it always starts in the heart. It does not start in the brain, because you are letting the brain go. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You are letting the brain 
feel free of itself. You are letting the body go. You are letting the emotions go. But the love, the meditation is intended always starts in love. And therefore, the blockage to get away, to get through the blockage, you have to intend it to break through. Because, yes, modern society as I see it do like to petition the heart because they would feel, as you were talking earlier, vulnerable. But vulnerability is the only way to get through everything in the heart. You must be vulnerable and accept that it is going to maybe even hurt a little to find those things that are there in the heart and purify it. Now, so many things in the heart, there are so many things about the heart chakra that you must know. I know that you know it's the center. I know you know that it now controls things. But did you know that you can change the control in your bodies through the heart chakra to help energize the other chakras? And I do not just mean saying that the heart chakra can be energized and it will energize the others. No. If there is a problem, if there is an imbalance, and you are aware of a body part of, that needs healing, there is a chakra for that. And the heart can help you heal your body. Your heart chakra is an amazing chakra because it can heal. It can be tele telepathic. It can be actually a controller of the intellect. So your heart chakra, centralized as it is, and with all the information that you have and read about the heart chakras, you do not even realize how strong the energy here is. Because if you let the heart chakra die, you have no control of your experiences. You have no control of your future. Let the heart chakra beam for you. Intend that it be the strongest in you so that your eyes and your third eye and your spirit are opened to a third chakra, fourth chakra, and fifth chakra event. Now, I think I am speaking over your heads. But, no, no, it sounds great, yes. But are there any more questions before I go any further? Please go. Please, uh, Please ask if you do need to ask. It is not, it is not an, a foolish question if it helps you to learn. Very good. Let, let me ask. Uh, the beat of the heart and the magic of, the magic of blood the beat of the heart energizes all organs, all other chakras, and kind yes. of gives the, the beat to all the body. Yes. Uh, and the chakra, is it connected to heart somehow? Is heart chakra center on the heart, or it's like shifted a little bit? Uh, is it also gives the beat to all other chakras through non-physical things, non-physical means? Yes. That is a good question because I can tell you this. If you are having heart problems, physical heart problems, you must go to your heart chakra. There may be a problem there. There may be a problem in your generations of hearts. Find out what has happened in those past chakras of hearts, and you may strengthen this human physical heart. You may strengthen your human physical areas by going to the right chakra and then concentrating on the heart. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes. The solar plexus and the sacral, if there's, and the root even, 
if if there is problems in the organs, if there's problems in sexuality or creativity, you can concentrate on those chakras that are connected to those parts of the body and also your reflexology. If someone does reflexology, concentrate on the heart as they are doing this with you so that it all is brought together in a central way and the power is dispersed to the right area of the body. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes. The heart is strong. The heart is vital. You may see it as the beginning of telepathy. Oh yes, and that moves to different places as telepathy becomes stronger and your chakras will be able to connect one to another in others. Do you understand that? The yes. heart will be the first connection, of course. And it will become part of your sexuality, become part of your love, become part of who you are as an advanced being because you will be able to connect in a way that you have never connected in the heart before and know the emotions, thoughts, and understandings of what the heart really means in a personal relationship. At this time, you are not connected by the heart in many ways, but you are in some ways. As you begin your telepathic rise, your hearts will start to connect. That web around the world of light and understanding will grow stronger when the heart is the strongest within you. The heart chakra is the strongest within you. And this will mean less illness. When you discover that the heart can control many of the facets of your health, you will understand that it is also helping others with their... When you connect heart to heart, you help each other's hearts as well as their physiology. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes, thank you. So this is part of your enlightenment, part of your move forward. This has not been revealed to you yet, and it is an advanced thought. But take heed, you are the first to hear it, that these things can be where healing begins in your lives and in the lives of others. Do not doubt it. Do not doubt it. Do not doubt it. Because it is essential that the energy of the heart be released. As you have been taught, the spirit rises up and it becomes at the end of the flesh and you have peace. And when it moves out, that is enlightenment. But it will be more than that in the future. As your telepathy grows, as your telepathy expands, it will also be enlightenment and healing for others. You will carry the healing of yourself and heal others with that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now, there are times when we must let go of our spirit because it must go to the next dimension. This world is done. This heart is finished with its purpose in this world. So you must know when this happens that the, the chakras will unwind. They may unwind from the top or they may unwind from the bottom, but you can help yourself pass to the next world more gently by unwinding them yourself when the time comes. You will know when that time is and it will be a time of peace and great thought and great recollection of this past world. All the thoughts of rememberings that will come to you will bring through your chakras and be there for the next life. I'm only telling you this because it happens without your attention anyway, but to be aware of it is something great. 
is uh, unwinding create does unwinding create strings are chakras made of strings rec which record the life experience they are made of waves of energy and energy un you can unwind it by going counterclockwise in your world but do not do that now wind it up clockwise and make it more powerful as powerful as you need it to be to be totally balanced in a good frame of mind now surely as human beings there will be times when you're discouraged or feel other things other than joy and positivity and enlightenment but to acknowledge that that is a learning time and acknowledge it as a positive thing brings you to a new phase of understanding. You must understand that everything negative that happens to you has a positive outcome if you would let it. So let it be positive. So whenever you have that negativity within you stirring up, you thank spirit or whoever that you feel deserves the thanks. That is important. To be true to yourself in the thanking of your higher guides, your spirit guides, Mother Earth, Gaia, Universe, God, the golden strings. It's, it's awareness that these are the lessons that this life has brought to you and thank God for them. And that will energize the heart chakra automatically. And you can hold your heart chakra and thank, give thanks for those things that are negative, which you see as negative and turn them positive because they are a learning experience. Even if you were to stub your toe, you can learn from it. Do you understand? Yes. This is a great w knowledge. Please be aware of it. The next time I come, I will speak to you about the communication and the throat chakra. But the heart chakra I could speak many, many hours about because there's many, many things that are undiscovered within yourselves that are all connected to the center, the heart. Many of you know, many of you know already that this information will help you. It will help you. It will help you. Do not let it pass lightly, for I will not speak it again, although this is being recorded, I believe. Yes. You may hear it again, but not from me directly. I have another question. Is it appropriate time to ask? Ask. Um, I'm anal analyzing my anger, and it, con it is connected to pain in the heart. Yes. I feel vulnerable, and it causes the pain in the heart. And I feel vulnerable because I'm striving to achieve something, and then I get pain, and that stops me, and I'm trying to protect myself by disconnecting from things. What would be your advice? Let go of the pride. Accept everything as it is. There are many things in you that, and in everybody, that we want to keep for ourselves, that we want to say that this is who I am, that this is what I'm here for, that this is the things that I do not want to give up because if I give this up, it will show weakness. It will show that I am vulnerable. It will show that. And therefore, you keep the pain there because there is something that you do not want to give up. There are parts of it that you hold on to because it will be embarrassing or a, a a negative emotion for you to experience. However, you will find when you release those negative and proud emotions 
they will lighten you. You will be filled with something that makes you want to express to others to do the same. Because you will have a freedom beyond that which you have now. You will have a freedom to understand others the way you do not now. Because you are holding on, you are keeping a petition, you are hiding these feelings and thoughts and emotions. The heart does not want to hide. The heart wants to express. It is hard for some people to express, and that will come with the throat chakra as well. But first the heart has to be open. The heart has to be cleared and has to be understood as pure. Now, you may say, how can the heart be pure in this world? But it can be. The heart can be purified. Surely you will have to do that more than once in your life. Because things attach to you. Things happen. You gather things into your heart, into your different uh, chakras, into your body, into your mind. Surely you understand that every now and then you have to change the filter. Because it collects things that don't need, don't need to be there. And th those emotions, pride and, and jealousy and things of that nature, need to go. They have no room in the growth. They, you may still grow and have them, but you are not growing as fast as you could. They hold you back. And those lies that you told many, many years ago, many years ago, and you continue to hold on to them because they've never been righted. You must say them out loud. You must burn them in your heart with that truth. Burn them in your heart with that truth. Because the lies that, hold, that you have told that have consequences have consequences for you. And I do not want to leave on a sad note. Because those things that you have burned out already, which I have seen much purification among you, much love being gener generated between you. Many tears shed because of love and because of guidance by each other and the heart reaching out and touching each other. You felt it already, but it can be even stronger when you release these darknesses, these things that don't belong. And many humans cannot do it. It is too strong. It is too embarrassing. It is too hard. But let me tell you, call on spirit to help. Call anyone by name that you know can help to burn this away. For with that in there, it causes you disease, it causes you anger, it causes you to be imbalanced in some ways, not necessarily in the heart but it causes imbalances in the body, in the actual physicality, the chemical resonances, how it all works together to be what it is. It hurts it in some way. Unconditionally hurts it in some way. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Therefore, Love. Burn. Burn in your heart. Feel that burn. Feel your excitement. Your highest excitement as it's labeled comes from the heart as well. 
Is there any questions now? Yes. Speak. Sabrina, would you like to go before me? I don't think her microphone's working, but uh, it's a great honor to have an Ascended Master with us. And I would just like to ask a question. As humans, we look at our sometimes linear aspects of our chakras. Do we have to connect? Can we connect any chakra to any chakra, or does it have to be in a linear fashion? No, the chakras are not linear in any way, really. They're orbs. They're circular. They're, they're not flat and linear. You can connect your chakras in any way you like in, in many senses. And you can connect them to others. But you are not at that point yet. You are not advanced enough to know how to do that. But it is the heart chakra that I want you to connect first. But yes, you have a linear thought pattern about many things. And many things are not linear. Time is not linear. I, I do not know how to explain it any better than that. Do you understand? Yes, it's, I understand. Would colors help with our linking yes. of the, the, the chakras? This is what comes to me. Yes, the colors are... Each chakra has its own color for a reason. And that, is, that reason is to show you how well it is, how healthy it is. The colors come in brightnesses to show you how healthy that chakra is. So if you have pink instead of red in your root chakra, you need to bring more color into it. How do you do that? You can look at colors. You can bring colors into you. It's, it's amazing how easy it is to energize a chakra by looking at colors and thinking positive thoughts. Do you understand that? Perfectly. Namaste, yes. Buddha. Thank you. You are welcome. I wish I could have explained it a little better. There's more depth to it than that. But the colors come to you in depths of color. And that's what I was trying to explain. The deeper the red, the greater the strength. The deeper uh -huh. the blue, the greater the strength. And if you're green, this would be mild. <laughs> Sabrina has a question. Sabrina. Sabrina. Her microphone is off. Sabrina, we cannot hear you yet. Oh, she might be typing in just a sec. Shut. Nope. Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. Yes, Sarah. How can we connect to our hearts if it's a little challenging to meditate. How is it? How can we? Do, is there another way of doing it? Yes, there's many ways to get through the heart chakra. When you cannot meditate, there are. You give thanks. You give thanks for all those things that have been good to you. For all those things that have been harsh. For you give thanks for the fact that you cannot meditate because there is a lesson there. There will come a time, after a time, when you will find yourself moving into your heart in a different way. And perhaps you're trying to intellectualize your heart. Let your heart be as it is. Grasp it, hold it, and love it, and feel energy coming from it. Now, if you don't feel any energy coming from it, that's fine, because there still is energy coming from it. Do you understand? 
the way to get to the heart is through the spirit and the spirit the way to get to the spirit is through thankfulness and understanding that joy comes with learning the lessons joy comes with giving thanks for all things thank you you're welcome and if if this does not work at first do not give up is it necessary to be able to me to meditate it is not necessary to be able to meditate it is helpful to be able to meditate some people cannot meditate they do not understand the concept of it they do not understand what it does and therefore they can bring in that information in other ways through the heart the heart understands meditation the heart understands the reason for meditation and the heart understands why you do not understand why it's there so therefore just go about your business thanking and loving and then when it hits you when that mind thought hits you that it is time to meditate because meditation will come to your mind this will be your time because you will then understand the meaning of it and how to move your heart with meditation how to expand your heart I should say with meditation all right thank you you're welcome um, Sabrina typed her question uh, so she says okay what is the best way to help someone whose heart is in pain emotional pain it would be to share your heart because their heart is in in pain your heart must help them and that's where you may connect you may feel their pain do you feel their pain can you answer that yes yes you are helping them get through their pain by feeling their pain with them do you understand this you are pulling that pain out of their heart and sharing it with yourself and you having a healthier heart can get rid of that pain and therefore your connection with their heart and your heart will help them now I understand that it takes time to pull all that pain out because they believe the mind controls that pain they're not thinking that the heart controls that pain so therefore you must control their pain with your heart does that make sense to you um, yes she says yes uh, so what is the way to get the pain out of your heart whatever the, re the cause of the pain is when you have the pain in your heart from someone else yes then that is when you meditate and intend the pain to go away and intend for this meditation those of you who meditate intend for the pain to go and intend for their understanding of the pain to go away as well there not to not the understanding of it but for, for them to understand how to let go of the pain because we give these messages to each other through prayer and through telepathy and we do not even know we are so attached to the feeling of individuality we're so attached to the very thought of being just who we are that we do not realize that our selves can help others just with intent to help others does this make sense to you yes this yes. is part of your telepathy part of your understanding of what a higher being can be because you will all come to be higher beings at some time but try it in your earthly body it may not be successful you may not be able to do it yet but it will happen with the human race that you will be able to do the things that you can only dream 
possible. If you dream it to be possible, it is possible. Because you cannot dream something that can't be. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, should I ask another question? Is there anybody uh, who wants to ask a question? Uh, I do. Yes. Hello, Master Buddha. This is Mary. Hello, Mary. Uh, do you meditate? And if you do, do you meditate by yourself? Or do you meditate with uh, groups of people? Groups of people? And yes. uh, what is your intention? What do you set your intention when you do meditate? I, my most high intention is the healing of Mother Earth and the healing of those that live upon her. Because there is much, much darkness there still. Even with the rising of many spirits and many vibrations, there's still much darkness. And I pray for the rising and the, the darkness to be overcome. But yes, I do meditate alone and I do meditate in groups. Because when you meditate alone, you are bringing the energy within to yourself and uh, sending the energy out to those who need it. And when you're with a group, you connect with them in your meditation and become a community of meditation. And that is very strong, very strong indeed, especially with spiritual beings becoming a, a, a great light for those of you. Did you get that? Yeah. Mary. Yeah, it's amazing that spirits also meditate. I didn't know about that. Yes. Yes. Yes, I got I got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Master Buddha. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. I must go now unless there's more questions. Uh, yeah, there is a, a belief that heart has its own mind and it is conscious by itself. So I just wonder what is this mind? How is it connected to our subconscious? How is it connected to our higher self? That's sort of what is the mind of the heart? The mind of the heart is to give the individual those things that it wants, that it is most helpful to accept. The mind of the heart knows the body, knows the mind, and knows the spirit, and therefore works to filter, connect, and purify the body, mind, and, and spirit. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. Uh, basically, yes. That's its function, yes, and it does what it is in a smart way. Yes. And it is to give you the power to understand the mind, body, and spirit. Not only does it help to control it and make it feel better or worse, as some people intend themselves to be, but it also creates its own reality with the mind, body, and spirit. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. It's so much joy and so much learning to be with you and learn from you. Thank you. I could speak about the heart for many, many uh, time zones or whatever, but I don't think that was correct. But it's good to speak to you. I hope that you understood. Yes, yes, it was very enlightening and very clear. Thank you very much. Much appreciation. Namaste and much love and I feel your hearts. I do feel that your hearts are good and that your hearts are wanting to express what I was speaking of. But make sure you purify them so that you can connect even better to those things that are you and are to come to you. The law of attraction, as you call it, comes with a pure heart. Do you understand that? It does come even when the 
heart is not pure, but it is limited by those blemishes in the heart, those things in the heart that are held there that are not supposed to be. And if you get rid of them, the law of attraction will be everything that you want it to be. It is very hard to keep the heart pure continuously. And it cannot be done on earth. It cannot be done. But you can revisit it every week, every day, every time that you want to. You can purify as often as you want. And if you can't purify yet, you will be able to. I must go now. Thank you. Namaste. 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 And Namaste. much love. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Much love. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, you're good now. Clear. Okay. Yeah. Hello. 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 Welcome, Jim. Welcome. Welcome, Jim. Hi. Hi. Wow. That was really good. Yeah. Welcome back. Oh, You're thank you. Wonderful. Oh, thanks. Well, I heard it was Buddha, right? <laughs> you want to hear? Um, yes. I I heard he was like in um um. What I was hearing is if you hear something and it sort of has an echo that feels like wave. Does that make sense? It's like a. That's what I it was, was like a wave, did you say? It, it, it sounded like rushing wind. Rushing? Yes. Rushing wind. Yes. Oh, rushing. Okay. In my head, I heard rushing wind, and I heard some words, and I saw some really cool things, but I didn't really hear what he had to, had to say. He pushed sort of pushed out that time. He wanted full control that time. So... I, I heard a lot of rushing wind. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Oh. So he had a good message? Yes, very good. Yeah, he spoke about the heart chakra and about purifying your heart. Wow. And letting their mind go in meditation and focusing on heart. Okay. Anybody has anything to discuss at the moment? I want to give Jim some... Uh, time to breathe and to come back to uh, uh, yes. to his body. Yes. yes, I'm going to get some more tea and um, you can talk to Max for a minute because uh, yes. I do need something to drink. Uh, Jaguar, how are you? Oh. What's, what's new in your life? I didn't see much of you. I guess you're not there yet. Um, no. um, Matt, yes. yes. You, you, yeah, you know, you know the first question you had posed, uh, talked about at the beginning when you were asking about questions. Yes, um, I was speaking about what, God and other consciousnesses. Correct. Uh, would L be able to speak on that? L is Since very, he, very reserved. They will speak only. Um, their, their function is not greetings. Really. What is that? Oh, one moment. Just greetings. Jaguar, you muted me, but we saw yeah. you speaking for a second. So yes, uh, L, we can ask him. Sometimes he answers, but uh, most often he would come only with, uh, you know. Or as a captain would come to do business. I mean, most of his answers are very practical and uh, down to to business. So yes, yeah, sometimes they answer that, but very uh, without energy. Basically, they kind of are busy with their stuff. Very very busy spirits doing uh, grand groundwork, and you know they can answer about God, but it's not their uh, duty to 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 educate us. Basically, angels are different. Oh. Higher spirits are different, but 
L are at, so far I spoke like maybe six or so times with L. They were mostly speaking about you know their needs and our needs and uh, you know whether they can help or not that sort of thing. Yeah, um, because you know the, the the thing also that would be good because how does free will come into play with what they are doing would be another good question. Like yes. where where does free will end? end um, in, in terms yes, so the question is, to, uh, how does free our free will and their free will uh, mm, play in their activity and in, in their duties and in, in, in the area of their activities? Yes. Um, yeah. I would say they are, formerly they are beings which started from low dimension and progressed to very high dimension. They are higher dimensional spirits. They are... Yeah, they are civilization of, of beings which were physical at some point. Uh, they just kind of took on themselves the duty to take care of finances and distribution of resources in the galaxy. So they are very advanced spirits, but they still sort of, like human collective, they're just different. I don't know if they were humanoids or not. I didn't ask. But I assume something like of that sort. So they also play in some sort of time... Uh, in some sort of time. Their time is very different, but they, they also don't know the, their future. They play as, as angels, as other beings. They're playing in the same uh, reality where they create their future. And they, they make the idea of service. They serve. So they respect our free will, they respect their free will, and they are in communication with even higher spirits like God and Creator. So so uh, the, the ones which are beyond time, which have uh, we can we control back and forth in time. But I think they are playing in a specific time. They have they have more flexibility with time. They can possibly look farther in the future and and correct something in the past. But they still are some somehow. That was I think that I asked if they are, uh, you know, somehow you know how far in the future are they permitted to go? And the answer was that they're playing in real time basically. Their time is different, but they're playing in real time. They don't know the future they created, basically. And oh, they also have a lot of parallel lines. So, so if they don't know the future, how do they, how do they decide that that's the best thing to do? Oh, from the past. Yeah, they create their future so that they know what's the best thing to do by looking at the past and creating the future. They, they are able to move forward that way. It's not only humans that don't know the future. It's not not only third dimensional thing. Four dimension, even seven dimensions. This our discarnate spirits. The 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 dead you know dead you know spirits of discarnate or which don't have bodies anymore. Mm -hmm. um, even the angels. They also they all play in real time. They have more flexibility with time. But you know they all kind of they all have experienced the same kind of experience we have. We know the past, but we are creating the future based on what we know. Oh, and also, yeah. they uh, well, as they're creating the future, uh, step by step, it's it's being molded and changed all the time. So, it's uh, it's one second it looks one way, and the next second it looks slightly different. So, um, the way I understand it is that it's being molded and corrected all 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 the time. So. Right. The, I would say, and, imagine... And, oh, go ahead. And, and I wonder at what point, uh, you know, what dimension or what point or beyond dimension do you have to be in order for you to uh, see most of it, um, the most future? Of most of the future, I don't know. Oh. That's oh. a good question. Oh. 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 Uh, Okay, uh, it, no one can see most of the future. Um, even can I, can even I ask most this? intelligent thing. Be, go ahead. Um, there can be certain simulations set up with certain technologies which can predict the future, but right. it's always a prediction, a probability, a possibility. Um, uh, certain scenarios can be played out with technology that can enable people to do that, but humanity is such a random race that it's very hard to. Um, Predict certain too many events. Right. Uh, 
too many uh, unseen relativities for it to be relations, totally relations. Yes. Yeah, yes, for it yeah, to be yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, relativities to be relativity is not right. right. Relativity. Yes. Huh. Well, okay. Relations for it to be correct uh, because one major. One major unseen thing will throw it totally off. So, yeah, uh, it all comes to the model of reality. Uh, the, basically, we live in the now, and the future and past are illusions that are created for us to experience the now. The past is the illusion which is very sturdy, very fixed, and the future is the illusion which is very fluid. And there are rules that define how our, our next moment is produced from the previous moment. But basically, this future is only probabilities by design. It's the matrix. It's a, it is a computer game where the future, by definition, is not fixed. Some things in the future are fixed, again, by design, like, like big events, which are node points for many things to come together uh, mm -hmm. by God. But again, this is fluid and the gods and creators put them in, you know, as a reference points, but, you know, they have the, the freedom to modify them as needed. So there is a scenario, a plot for, for the game, and some of uh, their creators have access to the plot. Say, angels, they know the major point in the plot in the movie, but, you know, it's not recorded yet, so the actors play according to the scenario, but they introduce a lot of new stuff in that scenario. Uh, one of the analogies could help. Maybe imagine yourself a, a, oh, here is, a doctor. Hmm, a doctor going from patient to patient in a, in, a, in a clinic. Or imagine yourself a repairman going from one computer to another in a big organization. They know a lot about computers which the users don't know. So the users have their experience and they kind of create the world in their computer. They change the files. But at some point there is a crash. So the the repairman can come and restore the computer from backup. So wait a second. So the whole past is changed now. You come back to the point a few days ago and you start from there. But from their perspective, it's it's a different kind of perspective. And that's what L does. They go from one timeline to another timeline, from you in this timeline to you another timeline. And every timeline has a different future. They have some glimpse into scenarios in those timelines. And they fix things, they sort of fixing things and helping things from other side of the veil. But again, they don't know all the future. They just help creating it according to certain rules. Mm -hmm. Did it clarify the idea of who knows the future? Basically, it's created. Mm -hmm. That's the, Design. Well, you could put uh, what's happening now into a computer, and it would it would uh, project a future. But if I were to say, "Slap my ass and call me Betty," it would have never predict predicted that. So, because it changes the conversation to serious to uh, non-serious. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah. It would have never predicted I me mean, saying that. Never. Right. Never yeah, because I understand. Never. I understand that there's a lot of variables, and and um, even you know some of um, like the council of creators that that you know I had read and it had came through me. Um, well. They send the information because they're too far out there. Right, exactly. Um, um, because even the way they're speaking, it's they still don't know what what's going to happen. So I'm just wondering if there's a point where that's true, or if, or if uh, the creator said, "I'm going to create and and let it be and let everybody just use." Their created their creativity to create their own. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um. So so that that would be interesting. It would be interesting if you could uh channel like Archangel 
I don't know, Gabriel or something and see their perspective on that. Yeah, that would be very cool. Yes. I what you have what you said has a lot of merit, so I but I I would have to talk to an alien to understand it, really, but uh but that's the way it is. Any is there any more uh conversation out there that they want to bring forward? I do. Okay. Are you is that uh, a spirit? Is that an alien I'm speaking to? No, it's just me. Okay. Peg. Hello. Um, when you channel, hi. Um, when you channel, do you go anywhere? Um. Yeah. This time I did. Not. Not always. I do not go somewhere always. But this time I went. I heard a lot of. Uh, wind sounds and I saw a lot of different things that I didn't recognize and this time was different with Buddha last time I was able to listen to Buddha a little bit but this time he took more control and sent me to a windy place but it was very beautiful but he knew that I liked the sound of wind so that was one of the sounds and I could hear that uh, I could see water in the distance and it was pretty interesting actually it it only seemed like i was there a couple minutes though so so, so yeah you astrally um, i went somewhere so do you astrally yeah. your body i i don't know i really don't know um that was a very unusual experience it like he sent me somewhere probably it was astrally but it was it, this time he, it was instead of me going there by meditating or whatever I went there by force <laughs> I mean he just sent me there so that was different but it was beautiful and amazing and I was probably there maybe five minutes so but it was a really gorgeous like day the wind was blowing but it wasn't blowing real hard I heard wind sounds I saw water in the distance it was bright there was vegetation and it was really quite a natural kind of beauty kind of thing you were like I was close to the shore but not real close would you say that that with time um, you leave more and more um, or it doesn't matter. I I'd say that with time it's it's changing. There, the aliens are getting more uh, used to being in me, and so I'm getting more used to them. So it's like a uh, I know what to do now more. And sometimes I go I go to my a happy place, and sometimes I stay just behind the door. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Uh, it depends on who it is and what they and how much uh, I want to interfere. If they think that I'm going to be an interference, then they'll push me away a little more. Because we as humans have a tendency to want to be involved in what they're saying. Really? So, yeah. <laughs> so they're not quite into that. So I'm um, not always. Not Lakesh is. Lakesh will let me. Uh, go in and out sometimes but uh, m more late recently they tend to keep me away so I won't be part of it yeah I, I have um, difficulties with that still yeah because I, I want to become part of the conversation because oh. if I can hear it at some point I, I want to be part of it too so see but, I want to go away <laughs> yeah it's it's um, this time they sent me away so I was away all right, we want to um, oh. ask personal questions to our alien friends if you're in the mood to channel more. Okay, we'll see if anybody's around. I... Yes. Uh, oh, play your drum, play your drum. Yes, yes. So prepare your waiting line. If somebody is on the phone, then you have to just pick up. And um, I don't know, we will have, we have nine people. I don't think we'll have be able to do all nine. 
here about half an hour, 40 minutes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> and if I, if my family comes to pick me up in about 40 minutes, I'll just leave and leave Jim to continue. But don't overstress him, yeah. overtax him. But now it's um, 11.35. You yeah, can I'm go. A little, I'm a little tired today, so we'll just leave whenever you leave. So. All right. Okay. Unless, of course, there's somebody here. Douglas. Welcome, Douglas. Thank you very much for coming through. We missed you. There is so much help you bring us. Uh, well, I just have to come and say a couple things first. Um, those of you that's trying to contact me, some of you have actually contacted me. Please don't do that because I cannot acknowledge anyone from the human colony because I'm being watched, as you know. So, um, on the earthly side, I'm being watched. So, the, so they cannot see that I'm getting messages from you. Is that is that understood? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, of course, your safety is first, and uh, um, your well being. So, but, but some people have contacted me. They found me somehow, and um, they are uh, said hello or whatever, and I'm going like, who are you? Ha ha ha. So, um, but. I, so I cannot, on that side, in fact, I might have said too much already. Yes, yeah, so I'll respect those wishes, Douglas. Um, the um, UK members were a little bit interested. Yes, well, I understand that. I would have loved to say hello, but it just wasn't there. I just couldn't do it at that particular time. And there was, uh, I know that I'm watched not 24 hours a day, I don't think, but... Uh, during my daytime periods when I run around and do my normal things and travel and things of that nature, I believe I do have people in my audience that do have connections that I am not happy with. So, um, therefore, I just would prefer you not trying to contact me at this time. So, um, I do not think they picked up on anything. We respect that much. That's you know, we're playing this game when they just watch us and let us do what we do because they believe we do a good thing. Yes. Very good. Right, exactly. Uh, very good. Uh, so, but I'm here from the human colony. I am visiting the human colony still. It's still not open, unfortunately. Um, and I will tell you why. Because they have discovered a couple glitches that could be uh, harmful. So, uh, with the new uh, technology, so they're working on that. So, but very shortly they will be back open. And um, some of you have come to the shadow colonies. The shadow colonies, um, uh, colony one is open. So, some of, on the shadow colonies, they don't have the same glitch that we have on our side. So, it's. They opened Colony 1. So. And we now call it E1. E1, yes. All right. So shadow, I call it Shadow 1, you know. All right. So because, shadow has a dark side. Is it dark? Uh, no, it's not dark. So E1 is much more uh, enlightened. E1, okay. Right. I'll go with that. 
All right, so what is that new technology? I couldn't explain it to you right now. It's not anything that I understand, but um, it is uh, connected with the traveling to and from. So that, that I understand. Uh-huh. <sighs> is there any questions? Is there any questions? I don't see oh, anyone in the line. Oh, I can answer a couple of things before you even ask. Um, they imagine that it should be open by your Wednesday, the 6th. Oh. The 6th of August. It should be open by the 6th. And it should be uh, up and running so that you can remember things not totally, but a little better than you did before anyway. So um, they still have the problem with when they put the memory back in from when you left, that it does erase some of the experience or, or pushes it to the subconscious, which cannot be helped. There's really nothing... When, when something... Be, you have to have that initial understanding of where you were when you left. So that is something they have to do. So, How is the video calling you doing? Um, what is new there? What new procedures? What new plans? What new videos? How they do that? How many of them of the videos contain aliens and how many of videos contain only humans speaking about stuff? It's 50-50 right now. There's four videos released on YouTube. Two are with humans and two are with aliens. How do we find them? I was very surprised about that and I still don't believe it's real. How do I f find those? Um, I think it's called... Oh, let me check. Hold on. Thank you. Did they put a name on them? What was the title? Oh, okay. From Beyond. If you if you Google From Beyond, I think it should show up. All four of them would, would be From Beyond? Oh, that... That's uh, the ones with the humans. Uh huh. I do not know what the ones with the aliens are. Hold on. Uh, they were released in the Orient. Oh, so our Chinese friends, please republish these videos, download them, and republish them again so we can see them. They were only released in the Orient this time, the ones with actual aliens in them. Uh, so the names will be Chinese? Yes, I couldn't even pronounce them. But I will get back to you with their American names soon. So. Uh -huh. Wonderful, amazing, thank you so much. That is, I think that is another exciting thing. If it is happening that is a great step forward very good so I was just wondering if there's any questions out there right now so do you know anything about any children of ours up there uh, obviously you meet Nina any other children of any other members do you meet what are the news about them most of them are very young or still in the incubation periods but there are some older ones, but they do not come to the colony at this time. They're still under supervision, and they still are being observed too much to be part of these programs. But I believe that eventually, within a year or two, they'll be able to come. Okay, so technologies. We just started discussing alien technologies that could be developed here. Obviously, you cannot disclose much to us, but suppose there is free energy, uh, transportation, portal technologies, making uh, like uh, replicators. Some of this our military already have, and some of this has been already published on YouTube and books. Do you have any insights on that? Can you help us with well, that? Well, I do know that there is a new process with taking uh, people by... Um, request. Uh, they are now going to be transplanting a teleporter within you so that you can come physically so that it will be a physical experience and not just a spiritual experience. So very shortly that will be in online as well. 
Amazing, great. Yes. Yeah, so they, we, what it will do, what will happen is that you, mo most of you have an implant behind your right ear anyway. But, so they're just going to modify that into a transporter. And so that when that is activated, you can be transported to the colony, and there will be no, there'll be no problems at all then, because you'll be there physically. But you won't be able to stay long, perhaps a couple hours. But uh, you can't stay for weeks or months, as you could be able to do in spirit. So, because the time is real time then. Oh. So. I see. Still, we would love to visit physically. It would be real time in your world and ours physically, if you came physically. Spiritually, we can manipulate time differently so that you could sense being there for a long period of time. But physically, it would have to be on our own time, a uh, human time. So, so how many uh, people are now considered for being taken to the colonies? Oh, more and more every day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, but I mean, the process has been speeded up some. So it's that's one thing. But the, they still do have some strict controls from the Octorians about uh, some. the 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 most important feature is the mental uh, stability of the human, not necessarily the physical aspects as much, but the uh, mental stability is still a great concern because things can happen in even spirit world that, um, or in the projected world that would be inappropriate if uh, the mind were to disintegrate, so to speak. Uh, uh, yes, I understand. The trauma of meeting as an alien might be big, and you described how you help in this conflict, yes. yes. Ah, there's many other scenarios, but you must have been pretty stable. And most of you, the most of you that have been there and have, we have told you that you're there, then your mental stability must be pretty accurate, so. May I ask a question? Thank Certainly. you. Um, some of the members that have hybrid children would like to be able to visit um, the children, I wonder if there's a way for them um, to ask for that? They're working on some things for hybrid children as well because it, that is a very popular request and as you know they like to please everyone but it's not always easy to do so but there will be some uh, some of you that may be able to visit your child. Not, unfortunately, not all of you will be able to visit uh, your child because of where they are or, or because of protocols or whatever. But um, if they move them around enough, perhaps they'll be able to, you all, to see your children. Um, I know that our galactic friends uh, do things when they see clearly the rational for that. Yes. So we need to help them to find the rational why it's good for everybody for if uh, we meet our children. Obviously, it's not only good for us, it's also good for our children to see their ancestors. Obviously, they have more than two parents. They have us, and they have also uh, alien or hybrid parents. But this reunion, I think, is very important for the children, hybrid children, to understand who they are, so that would serve them. Also, it would serve to expand their contact, and also it would serve to build the awareness of humanity, of hybrids, and become less afraid of human-alien hybrids. So that's the rationale. Obviously, if colonies are not suitable place to meet, we could meet in special intermediate meeting rooms elsewhere, and also it doesn't have to be physical physical meeting it could be holographic holographic or something physical holographic like that so we ask our friends to consider more carefully the need for us to meet our children oh all right 
that's that works. But um, I'm just saying that they are working on some plans for some people to meet their children, especially those that are older, like over four or five years old. They would uh, definitely um, want them to meet their their parents in uh, as they get older. There's some things that they're being taught about them. You, there, there's a distinct time when they, or a special time when they teach about the parents and such. Yes, my best contact with children is at early age, before two years old. I touch them, I unite an energy with them in my chakras, so, so I'm so sorry to have missed the early ages of my younger, of my older hybrid children. So that um, I also uh, say that early contact is very important for health of the child. I see. Um, I cannot comment on that right now because there are things that I know that I cannot divulge. So, but yes, they agree with you. I appreciate that. Um, I had a question about reptilians. So yesterday we discussed reptilians, good and bad ones, <laughs> and we don't know much about them, not at not all. Really, no. Can you tell anything about good and bad reptilians? More about shark, shark, sharp tooth reptilians, the friendly ones, and or whatever reptilians. Well, I, there's much to tell about reptilians. They're not all alike. There's five different species or more, actually, than that, but five that we deal with here. And um, two of them are not good, and three of them are good what what I should say two of them are good and two of them are bad and one of them is right in the middle there so um, it's le leaning toward good but not not really so um, I just don't know what to tell you they're they're somewhat um, uh, somewhat, they don't like to be around a lot of people. They'd rather be around their own species, and so you don't see them a lot, except for those that are branching out and actually trying to become part of, uh, like part of Grukfignir, like the friendly reptilians that have joined that alliance. But we still don't see them very much. I mean, they they have their input and they have their. Um, their uh, votings and things of that nature in the councils and things of that nature, but, but we don't really see them that much. Um, there is one that comes about now and then, and his name is Froshond. 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 Yes, Froshond. And he is very different in the sense that he's very mild. Um, he's a very mild, usually they are, they like a strong presence, and they like a strong personality, and they like, you know, that kind of thing, but he's a very mild, soft-spoken gentleman, and um, very, I find him quite easy to talk to, but um, he's the only one that really comes around so much, so. How tall is he? Oh, he's about six foot tall. Um, does he have a human body at all? It's... It's humanoid in some ways, sort of scaly. Oh, I mean, it's very scaly, of course. A little greener than our bodies. Their how they were. Um, their uh, evolution did not bring them into a humanoid facial uh -huh. point. It brought them into a more uh, long, elongated face. So. If he see the him dancing and ignore his head, would be would would he could he be confused for human dancing the same proportions? No, not really. No. What's the difference? Well, he has a tail. Oh, that's yes. About uh, probably a foot long. It's not real long, but it's very obvious. Um, and his color is green, and his head is more elongated, and would be very different. Difficult to call it human. Yes. How about hands? Are they different proportions? Uh, the hands are different proportions as well. They're three prong, three prongs like like paws, but the feet have five five prongs, but the hands have only three. So are his nails sharp? Yes. 
Are his teeth sharp? Um, somewhat, yes. Is it the sharp tooth uh, species? No, that's the, another one. Yeah, is it a similar, a similar? The second positive. Yes. Ah, let's number them. Um, so sharp tooth would be first, and that would be a second reptilian species. So we need yeah. some names. Do you yes. have a name for them? Well, there is. Also, zeta reptilians, they call them zeta reptilians. So, there's some other species is called zeta. Right. Can you give s at least some name to, to the well, second one? They've changed, some of the names have changed, even within the last year, because too many people knew their species names, so they decided to change them. Let's give them at least some number um, or name or something. But I know their new names, if you would like. Yes, give this. Thank you. Fenton. The Fenton race. Fenton is uh, sharp tooth. Sharp tooth is fen, teen. Fenton. Oh, wonderful! And uh, the very friendliest ones are called Lashunda. 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 And uh, that gentleman you described is Lashunda type. Yes, he's more of a Lashunda type. Yes. Wonderful! Now we know. He's it is from the Federation's reptilian group. Galactic Federation of Light? Galactic Federation? No, 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 no. Gork Fitnir. Gork Oh, so Sharp Tooth is not Gork Fitnir? No. Oh, that is something new. Did you assume that they were? They told us that they are. Ah, well, I think that there was a mistake there. So Lashunda are the ones. Huh, interesting. Um, um, Douglas. The night. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, Mary. I wanted to ask. Douglas, I'm not aware of any hybrid children. You're not aware of them? No. Um, I cannot answer that because I don't have the right uh, material uh, to research that. But I will ask to Kerr or uh, Nina if you have any hybrid children. For, one moment. Nina may be nearby. One moment. Zanshan, yes. Rashubhata. She's not available at the moment. But if she comes available, I will speak to her directly. Okay. Yeah, Sanaida had a question also. Um, yes. I don't know if you can answer. She wanted to know where her hybrid children were. Um, they're in... Uh, hold on. That's another question for the aliens because I don't know. I call oh, them okay. aliens. They don't mind. So Douglas is not very good person to ask this kind of questions about hybrid children. I'm very, I'm not, I do not have any access to that information. Um, I mean, there are places I can go, possibly, to find this information, or people I can ask that they, they can access that information. But uh, on our computer systems, there's no information about the hybridization. They want to keep it totally neutral and unprejudiced. If someone should come to the colonies that was a hybrid, they would not want them to be called a hybrid, I do not think. So I suggest let's ask the question which are perfect for Douglas. Uh, Douglas is in a unique position. He is a human from UK, being in the colonies right now, and very much involved for a long time. So these are the questions that would be perfect about the colonies, about alien species. And Douglas was very open describing different. First description of experience and description of Lashunda. It's amazing what we got. Please go ahead with the questions. Oh. Well, what 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 do you have? I mean, uh, so since last time, what are the new new information do you have for us? I do have. I did have the new information that they will be modifying the uh, the uh, the uh, what are they called? Transporter protocol. Yeah, the protocol. They're going to put a transporter in your implant, and so that you would be able to go in body to the colonies. That's something new. The other thing new is that they are working on glitches that may cause harm 
nothing nothing major I don't think but still they don't want to harm you in any way so they're working on that and also that um, they'd like to get a program where they let you know more ahead of time when you're going to leave it's obvious that a lot of people did not know that they were going to leave when they left so <clears throat> this is something they're working on as well um, they have had people come to you before you uh, were sent to the colonies and let you know when that was going to be, but no one seems to remember that at all. So, huh. so it's obvious that there's something wrong there as well, unless the information is being not being transmitted properly or someone is removing it afterwards. So what's going to be the process of inviting? So they will telepathically tell me that you know it's time well, to usually go. Usually you would have a visitor the day before, or or at that night before you, as you're going to sleep, you might have a visitor that will say at 3 a.m. we're going to take you and you'll be back by 5 a.m. or whatever. So it's like tele uh, astral projection, like yes. Uh, yes. holographic projection, which appears in my mind. Yes. Yes. They will let you know that you will be gone for two hours, human time, whatever. Would it be only in my mind or would it be visible to others in the room? I'm not sure. Let me ask them. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, one minute. It'll be only in your mind. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. mind projection, I yes, guess. Yes, mind projection. <laughs> Hello, Sarah. Hi. Yes, I have a question for uh, no, uh, not a question. Um, she wanted to confirm that her child's name is Aline. That's A L I N E, but it's pronounced A L E E N. Aline. Aline. Is, is it a question or a message? Did she give that name to a child or did she ask about that? Yes, yeah, she, she gave about that the... name to her child, Aline. the daughter. I've heard that name being mentioned, yes. Yes. So I, I believe that that's probably would have to be her child, yes. Yes, that would be her child, but she wanted to confirm the pronunciation of it. And how is it spelled? Making sure. It's spelled A L I N. E, but ah. it's pronounced A L E E N. Ah, very good. Understood. Uh huh. So it's a message then. Understood. It's, have... it's there. It's gotten there. And yes, uh, they have pronounced it correctly. Oh, perfect. They, had, um, they saw the spelling. They pronounced it correctly because they knew her mind was a little bit there. So obviously, mm -hmm. they they were tapping into her a bit. Uh huh. And she wanted to know if she has been to E1 and E2. E1 and E2. Well, I can check that. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, that was um, not severely recent, but about four weeks ago. Hmm. About four weeks ago. But you see, not. E1 is now open again. Is that what we're calling it? E1. Yes, E1. E1. It's back open again, and you will probably go there again. Let her know that. What's the function of E1? E1 is telepathic. Oh. So, yes. Teaching telepathic and teaching languages. However, they're not as advanced as the original colony, but they are. Uh, doing some teaching, mostly Pleiadian, mostly Pleiadian uh, language. Of course, I and mean, this is Pleiadian. Com yes, mostly teach. just Pleiadian. They're not really. Whereas on the original colony, they're teaching several different languages. On the uh, Aaron colonies, they're just doing the Pleiadian. Uh huh. That's all. Do you know the numbers of people in E1, two? Um, E1. The thing is, they don't take a huge amount at one time because it's easier to teach when there's only a few. Then you can pay more attention to the class. Uh huh. <coughs> I believe um, they take three or four at a time. Uh huh. Douglas, yeah. would you be able to um, 
pass on the names for uh, Sinaida's hybrid children? Yes. Okay. For the boy, she wanted Adama. Adama. How do you spell that? A-D-A-M-A. -A. Very good. Next. And for um, for the girls, she wanted Sune. Sune. Is yeah. that S-O-O-N? S-U-N-E. Oh, lovely. S. U N E Sune. Very good. Got okay. that. Thank you. It has been passed on. So what they would like you to do though is whenever you want to talk to your sons or daughters to make sure you give the name so that they know who you are talking about because there's so many now. There's becoming so many hybrid children that it's, it's going to be hard for them to memorize all these different people belonging to certain people. Do you understand? It's it's going to be difficult for them to <laughs> to keep it all straight if they unless they have the computer right in front of them. So help them out a little bit. Okay. Um, Roy has a question. Yeah. Roy, yes. Hi Douglas. Um Hello. I'll ask my second question first. Um I just want to get more clarity with the hybrid children. Yes. And um, my understanding is the hybrid children, um, people want them to belong to people, to so their parents and such. Is it more of a mix of lots of us together creating these hybrid children and we're all the parents or is it just a singular type of... No, it is more singular. Concept. And the reason for it being more singular instead of uh, being um, multiple is that um, they want to see from they want to see specific results and specific characteristics of uh, of the blending of those species and the care of those species and things of that nature. It's it's loving but also scientific. Okay, thank you. It is my second uh, question is um, yes. so, sorry, carry on. Oh, no, go ahead. No, please, after you, you had something else to share. I said it's a wonderful family unit. It, I've seen them, uh, but it's like also scientific as they do have to deal with specific things in their physiology that they didn't have before. Uh-huh. So it's a, almost an evolutionary kind of thing but it's being done purposely, purposefully. So okay. most of the hybrid follow up. Mm. All right, go ahead. Are you still in hybrid children? I wanted to talk about hybrid children in general. Oh, Robbie? yeah, mom was just a quick, quick little question. Yes or no? Um, I was at a very powerful festival at the weekend, um, ah. and I want. I gave you all an invite to join me by the fire. All the colonies, everybody at the colonies. So I just wanted to. Maybe know if you heard my invite and if anybody uh, yeah, decided actually, to join me. I did, but I have special control things that will let me do that. Did anyone else hear? I think that Jim had uh, some inkling about it, so that was good. Fantastic! Anyone else Thank you very the much. Invitation? I certainly did. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I sent it out to all the members of the Hukulo and um, all in their fourth dimensional forms yes. to come and join me. And I felt really, it felt like I had a lot of people around. So it was very special. You, you thank you, Max, for letting me ask that question. Yeah. What, what day was it? Um, it was over a couple of days in the evening by the fire. We were sharing stories and um, everybody was listening. And it was a very, very Bashar moment, if you want to say. Was it Thursday night? Stories. Yes. Thursday night I was singing by the by the fire on the beach of Ontario Lake in the dark. <laughs> what a great Namaste, Max. Interesting um, similarity there. Synchronicity. Synchronicity, yes. Hello, I saw someone else pop in there. Did someone else want to pop in? Yes, please continue. I will ask my question and you go after me. So the hybrid children that grow being being brought up in hybrid 
cultures, like yes. on the hybrid ships and stations. Have you communicated with those hybrid cultures, can you tell anything about them, what they are? We have no clue who they are. Uh, well, there are some Lyran cultures, some Aryan cultures, some some um, Fenderan cultures, some... Fenderan? Uh, what is Fenderan? Fenderan is um, in Sirius area. Ah, Fenderan. Fenderan cultures and I. I know some of you know about Fenderin. Yes, we 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 came across that. Who they are? How do they look? Um, they're being brought up in those cultures. They may not look like the Fenderins. So um, I don't really have no about them, but I know that the, they are in the culture in their own like species. I was asking about Seven of Nine of Star Trek yes, and she was said by someone that she has Fedoran genetics. Fedoran? So I thought Fenderan and Fedoran sound similar. Maybe it's the same race which we haven't heard about before. I hmm. would not know. I'm sorry. All right, all right. So, um, so these hybrid cultures, they are... Yes, there's Syrian, serious cultures and there's Alirin, of course. So, Arcturian. Arcturian. There, it's rare, but there is one Arcturian um, hybrid child that has Arcturian parents right now. Wow. But there is some Arcturian hybrids that have other other parents, not Arcturian parents. So how many of those are walking on the ground on the Earth, right here on the streets, coming to the store, experiences human life? Which hybrids? Pleiadian. Uh-huh. Um, only about 4%. 4% of the Earth population? 4% of hybrids from that were from off-world are now on-world. Um, in actual numbers, would be tens of thousands, hundreds of oh, thousands. No, 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 not. I'm talking about the recent program change and things of that nature. So it would only be about maybe twelve people. Yes. We were talking. We have thousands yes. and thousands oh, of yes. hybrids. There's thousands and thousands of hybrids, but not. I'm talking the new era, the very, very newest era, where the volunteers were given. So. Amazing, amazing. So, but um, yes, there's thousands. Otherwise, yeah. Are they fully conscious of their them being hybrids? No, no, not at all. Oh, they will if they ask. If they come here and ask, they'll be told that they are. But some of them know that they're different somehow. So, so they have uh, human parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. I'm talking about hybrids who grew up in alien culture and then land here temporarily to live and experience human life. Uh, who remember the alien past? Oh, I do not know. I have no idea. Um, I like I said, I don't have all the uh, the uh, access to all that kind of information about hybrids. I have nothing. So I mean, except for a few things that I hear now and then, and they do discuss the 12 people that are on the Earth from the new hybrid program, so I knew about that. But uh, I, I don't know very lot about the program because I'm so involved in this one, the program Max? right here. Yes, hey, yes. Max, um, seven, 7 has a question, so does Caroline. Which, yes, yes, um, please, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Alex. Mm, uh, well, my friend, uh, Recently, she applied to the human colony, and uh, I want to ask uh, for, for her. Like, had she been to the colony? One moment. Okay. What is her name? Her name is Hu Yanyi. Hu Yanyi. Yeah. One moment. I'll check for you. That I can check to see if the people have been to the colonies. Yes. Yeah, um, she is on the list to come to the colonies. Let me see if she's been. Uh, actually, she has been once. She was at Colony 2. Yeah, yeah. What, what, she, what did she do on Ivan? 
Pardon me? Uh, what did she do? Oh, um, what did Eva? she do? Oh, yes. yes. Colony 2 is about fitness and health and diet. And so she was in that colony. I'm not sure in what acts, what um, means she was there. I'm not sure if she was learning or teaching. But I do know she was there. Mm. Oh, okay. Thank you. She was only there once, though, according to this. But she is coming back. She's going to be in Colony 1 next time she returns. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll tell, tell her. Very good. Uh, okay. It looks like Pegasus has a question. Is it is it your turn? Yes. But again, asking about hybrid children is not proper for um, Douglas. He doesn't know, actually. Okay. There's other questions, I'm sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello? Cool. Well, um, I was going to ask. Hello? 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 We can hear you fine, yes. We can hear you. Can you? Oh. you can hear us? Okay. Um, I can hear you. Oh, wonderful. I was going to, I was going to ask if he could deliver the three names of my Lyran hybrid children. Deliver them? A message. Like, Pass along. Oh, yes, I can do that, yes. Yes, um, okay. Ama, A-M-A, -A for the ah. eldest son. Ama, yes. Very good. Um, Amet, A-M-E-T, for the youngest son. Amet. Very good. And and Baquet, B A K E T for the daughter. Very nice, very nice. B A K E T Baquet. Yes. Yes. Very nice. They've gotten them. Yes. That is good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Major, you had more to say. I have a question from Line E, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Uh, she's watching on YouTube. So uh, she asked me to ask you what the Andromedans are like mm -hmm. and who they teach telepathy. And she believes that they teach telepathy on Colony 1, if, if that is correct. Yes. There are Andromedans occasionally on Colony 1. They're very, they move very quickly. They're not real tall. Uh, the, there's more than one species of Andromedans out there, but uh, the, the species that comes to Colony 1 move very quickly, are a shorter variety, about five foot tall, maybe a little shorter, and um, speak very quickly and um, are very, very, very funny. They have incredible senses of humor. Really, really fast. Very fast for and quick. Whether they intended to be funny or not, they they certainly keep us entertained. So, um, but they're lighthearted. They're very loving. They're very good people. Um, they're just so quick. They're fast. Very fast, and they move fast, and they talk fast, and they. They smile a lot, although you may not be able to tell until you get to know them that, that that's a smile, but it is a smile. So they smile quite a bit. Um, so as far as I know, Andromeda is a galaxy. It would have as many races as yes. uh, Milky Way galaxy. Yes, so it would be nice to give them a name so we can relate to them later. So Andromedans from Colony 1, do they have a name? Uh... They call themselves Talakians. Talakians. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. She'd be very happy to hear that. Talakians, yes. So we invite Talakians to come through our channelers and to speak to us, especially we like your quick and funny nature. Yes, well, I, I'll speak to them, but... I have I don't see them around that often, but they are around and they're very funny. Uh, Gib is one of the names of one of the Talakians that I really uh, get along with very well. Do they look human? Are they related to us? Uh, they have a human sort of look. 
their faces are seem to look blank, but um, it is a humanoid type of face. Yes, I it there is some wrinkles on it. Are they related to us? I do not even know that, so I'd have to really get into that. But there's so many species that come that you don't even speak about that we see maybe once in a while that mm -hmm. um, that do look sort of human. The wrinkles on the Talakian's face are on the cheeks and things, which make them look much older than they actually are. Any more questions for Douglas? I have another question, but... Um, I'm starting to fade away a little. All right, so we have to wrap up. Any more questions? No, I think I think we're good. Um, I, I, yesterday we raised a question which I think is very important for the humanity. Uh, what is bad about bad reptilians? You mentioned species 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and introduced 1 and 2. So. This four and five, the bad ones, you know, let's sort them by how bad they are. So the five would be the worst one. What's the, the bad thing about them? I, I don't have time for that, really. All right. Um, they, I will get into that next time, but I have to go now. So they're, they're calling me back. So, but that is an interesting question. Thank you very much for coming. Much appreciation and blessings to you. Thank you very much. But um, goodbye to all of you, and thank you very much. And uh, I understand why you tried to contact me, and I really appreciate it, but please don't do it at this time. So, um, much love to you, and I will talk to you soon. Namaste, Douglas. Oh, namaste. namaste. What a lovely thought, yes. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you. Yes. Namaste, yes. Oh. Jim, uh, welcome back. Oh, thank you. We are about to wrap up. I just want to remind you that Jim's schedule for private channelings, private personal sessions is largely open. So contact him through his normal ways. On uh, There is a page on humancolony.org and schedule a session with him through Skype and you will have a chance to ask a lot of personal questions about whatever you want. Okay, very good. Thanks. Um, yes, I love talking to you all. And some of the messages that come through are so profound. I love that. They seem to know yes, everybody, yes. everybody personally, so that's cool. So, And if we have a chance, we'll make sure they are recorded. And remind Jim to start the recording. And, oh, yes. And, yes, uh, right and right. you might get a recording. And the Pamela program is the one which you can use for the first time. For the first month, it's free for you, so you can record the Skype conversation on your side. Yes. So let's do the final blessing. Anything we need to discuss before we close? Um, Jaggy was asking me to inform you that he's here now. Okay, very good. Hi, can Jack, someone I'm... please inform Max I'm here after... Uh, oh, okay, got it. Uh, so Jaguar wants to speak after we stop the broadcast. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. No problem. Okay. All right. Um, anything else before we start closing? All right. <laughs> Just a quick message to everybody listening on YouTube. Donations are welcome. Whatever you would like to give and help out with human colonies is much the uh, appreciated and accepted. So that's a quick message to all the people listening. Yeah, Robbie, um, thank, thank you much. Thank you at some point wanted to revive the activities on bringing together organizers and talk together. Mm -hmm. So I would welcome that. I'm yeah. surf. I'm running against a couple of deadlines, and I'm divided my, my time between different projects and whatever I can do in that specified time. Like four dimensional activities that from that time of the schedule and third dimensional activity the other. I have to balance my life. My my life is largely imbalanced at the moment. I need to come back to the 
background things. Yes. So well, he has people visiting his house. Yes. And he's here at my house, so that that's like a. It was amazing to introduce some of the friend children friends children to Reiki, and it was amazing how they took it. They Good. they were really like it was. I initiated them into Reiki. Wow. Cool. Yep. All right. Um. Today is the wonderful day. Yes, it is. The weather is great, the rain is coming, but altogether I think it's a great day. Yes. I see the fabric of time and fabric fabric of matrix being distorted and it is distorted by desire. I speak one thing, other person hears another thing. I intend to do one thing and I make errors which I would never do ever, 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 ever. And I just know it's by design and I welcome that. I welcome the trouble, especially the small ones, the troubles, it's just, oh, I say, I, hello, I recognize you, the trouble. I welcome you because you're here by design. <laughs> I speak to you and you don't understand me. And I forgive you, I forgive myself, I forgive the whole universe because it is the nature of our experience by design. The life is beautiful as it is. Not knowing the future is here by design. And I'm tired of trying to sneak into the future. I'm tired of trying to skip the experiences. No more magic. I take magic as tool, but I don't want to cheat. I want to take my experience as it is intended. And here I give the mic to Jim for the final blessing. As usual, I just want to thank all the entities that help us here today. Mother, Father, Earth, God, the Universe, Gaia, Higher Selves, Spirit Guides. Thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you all for letting us know that we can ascend, that we can be greater than we are. And being greater than we are is actually being all that we are. So we can be so great. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just want to just say I wish blessings upon all of you, healing upon all of you, and love upon all of you. Have a great day. Namaste. Bye-bye. Goodbye, goodbye. Ten seconds to shut down of the broadcast. Hey, Absolutely. ask it yourself. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 You want to stay for the after broadcast? Yes. There, I guess Jaguar's coming staying. Did you want to talk to us alone, Jaguar? All right. Stop yeah. in the broadcast. Okay.